Hello, my name's Ian McCall, and this is another in the series of the videos for Demoscopy Made Simple. Today we're going to look at lines, and particularly lines reticula. Now, in the Kitlerian uh, approach to diagnosis of dermatoscopic lesions, lines take precedence over other structures. And lines reticula is a common structure because, you know, we look at a lot of nevi. Remember that lines reticula is made up of the arrangement of pigmented cells over the dermal papillae, uh, which gives you the clear holes because there's only a thin layer, and along the sides of the reti ridges where there's a thickened layer, and that gives you the pigmented network. Let's have a little look here. Look at the different types of lines that there are. These are the lines reticular. These are lines branched. These are lines parallel, seen on the palms of the hands and the soles of the feet. These are lines radial. Uh, and you also can have lines radial meeting at a point. And lines radial meeting at a point, peripheral, are often a feature of basal cell skin cancer. There's also lines curved, and we'll be dealing with these in a separate uh, video. Pseudopods are also lines peripheral, but they have a small uh, knob at the end of them, and they deserve a different uh, video on their own. So, let's have a little look at our lines reticula. Normally, the diagnosis of lines reticular is going to be an evis or a melanoma, a solar lentigo, a reticulated sep K, or a dermatofibroma. We'll go over the diagnosis for the others when we come to them. Just a summary again of lines reticular. Generally, melanocytic, either an evis, congenital, or a melanoma, or a dermatofibroma, which isn't really a pigmented lesion, it's only reactive pigmentation in the surface, solar lentigo, or a reticulated seborrheic keratosis. Let's look at some examples of these. This clinically is a variably pigmented lesion, and when you look at it dermatoscopically, you see that you've got your lines reticular here, your net-like lines reticular, but there's different colors of lines reticula. These are much darker in this area than they are here. They're disrupted here. They're a different shade here again. So these lines reticula are part of a melanoma. This was a superficial spreading melanoma. In contrast, here also are lines reticula. But here you've got one color and one pattern. So it's a benign lesion. You've got a pretty uniform network. The areas that are missing here are the openings of hair follicles. And this is the pattern of lines reticular in a benign nevus. What about this one? Here you've got two patterns. You've got your lines reticular, but they're very disrupted lines reticular here. There's not the same regular network that you see in your benign nevus. And you've also got this central structureless area here. But so you've got two patterns and one color, but there are no clues to melanoma. In one of our earlier videos, we looked at clues to melanoma. So this is a benign lesion. It's in fact uh, a Clark or dysplastic nevus. And this is quite a common pattern where you have a structureless central area and a peripheral network, albeit um, a disrupted one. But let's look at this case. Again, you've got lines reticular. You've got this network pattern that's making up certainly more than 10% of the lesion, which is usually what you need to call something a, a, a dominant pattern. But here you can see the network is obviously thickened here. In some areas you can hardly see it because there's pigment in between the, uh, the normal network. You've got varying colors. Now, here there were two patterns, lines reticular and gray dots. There were some gray dots up here as well, and several colors. 
and there was this clues to melanoma. There were thick, dark lines, reticular peripheral, and the gray dots. Now, this was reported as a severely dysplastic nevus. This could be a case where, uh, you know, if you're quite convinced that this is a melanoma, it's quite reasonable to challenge the pathologist and say, look, um, do deeper cuts in this. They may only have sectioned certain areas and missed the, the most relevant area to your, uh, to your dermatoscopic diagnosis. So ask them to look again if you really think that something is a, uh, a, a melanoma rather than a severely dysplastic nevus. It can be very difficult for the pathologist. Let's have a look at this one. Here's another one, more than one pattern and color. Same patient, actually. Um, and here, you have your thickened lines reticular, darker color, peripheral. You've also got an eccentric blue globular clod and some blue-gray structures in here as well. So here you had two patterns, lines reticular and blue clods, and several colors. So it's suspicious. And the clues to melanoma were the peripheral thick dark lines reticular here and the blue-gray structures. And this, in fact, was an invasive melanoma. You can see it's not all that different from the previous one, but the previous was reported as a severely dysplastic nevus. Either way, the severely dysplastic nevus was cut out with uh, 5 millimeter margins. Now, there can be other non-melanocytic lesions that can look dark like a melanoma. And this is one, a dermatofibroma, and it can have lines reticular round the outside of it. Um, this is because there's irritation of the melanocytes in the overlying epidermis, and they'll uh, put out more melanin, and it'll give this lines reticular pattern. But of course, you've got your white central structureless pattern that's typical of the fibrosis of a dermatofibroma. So here you've got more than one color and more than one pattern, so it's suspicious but there are no clues for melanoma. And this was a dermatofibroma. But remember, you can get lined reticular around the outside of a dermatofibroma. And the other ones that we should talk about uh, is this one. Let me just make it a touch smaller. This is a gentleman with a couple of pigmented lesions on his cheek. And these were, in fact, solar lentigos. There weren't lentigo malignants. One pattern, one color. Admittedly, different shades, but this was benign. Now here, you've got a pseudo-network. It looks like lined reticular. But in fact, the holes that you're seeing here are the openings of the hair follicles uh, on the face. And on the face, the epidermis is flattened. You don't have prominent dermal uh, papillae and, uh, and ridges. So you don't get that contrast and thickness of cells that you would get elsewhere to give you your lines reticular. And what you get is a pseudo-network made up of the openings of the hair follicles. So this was a solar lentigo with a pseudo-network. In other words, it's pseudo-lines reticular on the face made up of the openings of the hair follicles. So always remember that. And this, of course, is not a melanocytic lesion. Um, there's increased melanin deposited in keratinocytes in the skin in a solar lentigo. In some, there are, in fact, uh, a bit of an increase in, in melanocytes along the dermoepidermal junction, but it's essentially excess melanin in keratinocytes. And lastly, for lines reticular, let's have a little look at this lesion. This is an ink spot lentigo. You look at it, it looks like lines reticular here, but it's very disrupted. Look how broken they all are. They're like sharp bits of wire at the periphery. So it's a very disrupted um, uh, lines reticular that you get here. Very dark color. Big difference in the sizes of the holes. But it's still one color and one pattern, so it's benign. So an ink spot lentigo with disrupted lines retic pattern. More commonly, uh, a solar lentigo, uh, 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 ink spot lentigo shows a lines branch pattern. And that, in fact, will be the next topic that we'll go on to. Thank you very much.